The first time my parents took me to an aquarium, I was mesmerized by the beautiful fish behind the glass. My best memory of it was when a random fish broke the glass, jumped into my shirt, and started to wriggle around like no tomorrow. And that, kids, is how I lost my virginity. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. The Najima family take a trip to a local aquarium and gaze at the beautiful sight of the ocean. Tekai mentions how the scale is even more impressive when she's at the size of a child. I'm sure there are plenty of things that can impress her at that height, if you know what I mean. Of course, you know how my man P. Diddy be doing things. He's excited to take his little wife with him everywhere. Oops, I mean, Kisuke. Hehe, <laughs> my bad guys. Also, YouTube don't hurt me. Every word that comes out of my mouth should not be taken seriously, at least most of the time. Kisuke mentions how this entire experience feels like a dream. He gets a chance to relax on his day off alongside his beautiful little wife that he'd thought he'd lost 10 years ago. It's all so much for him to the point where he starts crying. <laughs> oh, come on, Takai. He's just happy to be with you again. He's crying because you're just so cute and funny. The family spends some more time together while they are at the zoo. Takai gives some encouragement to her daughter. After a fun day at the zoo, they each return to their separate homes, which causes Takai to lament. You know that feeling you start to get in the pit of your stomach when you know something isn't right? Oh, don't worry. I don't have to poop. I'm just a bit nervous for Takai. Oh! Takai returns home and immediately, the tone of the episode changes. She finds two heels on the ground. Sometime later, Kisuke notices that he should probably compensate Takai for making all of those delicious bento boxes for him. Later on, we cut to Takai at school with her friends. It seems like two of her friends are arguing with each other about something trivial and immature. <laughs> Sekai decides to try and settle the argument in the court of law for childish disputes. They give their testimony over who's right and who's wrong. Mayumi asked her about her room, and she said it was a dirty room. You need to leave! Dirty in which way, though? Takai tells Himari that she should apologize for being too blunt. She complies. However, Mayumi is still upset and refuses to forgive her, but Takai is having none of it. She tells her that if she gets upset at little things all the time, she will never make it as an adult. Takai proceeds to give them very mature-sounding lecture for her age. She's a kid, but she's over 40-something years old. And she's single. <laughs> then comes Takeru, a boy who seems to be Takai's new childhood friend. He seems to have a crush on Takai. The two start to walk from home, but Takaru claims that she's always walking home alone these days. He tries to get closer to her, but it's obvious that Takai is feeling conflicted about her past self and her current self. His genuine concern for her is so sweet. But there's no way that the two of them can actually get together, right? Eh, I guess we'll find out as we go through these episodes. Takai arrives home, and immediately she gets tense. A woman starts coming down the steps. She confronts Takai for not being honest about staying home. As you might have guessed, this woman is Takai's new mother. She's very mean, but I know some of you may want her to step on you. I absolve you of your sins. 
You have been forgiven. Takai's mother starts harassing her about her trip to the aquarium with her family. She gave her money to use for food, not for anything else. She then demands her to hand over all of her money. Talk about an abusive parent. Takai hands over what she has left, but when her mother inquires if that was all she had, she thinks she's lying. Mama? Mama! Takai's mother looks through her room to find any loose cash she might have. I'm worried about how aggressive she's being. I sure hope that she doesn't hurt Takai. Mama! You evil, conniving, nasty, disgusting, slutty, whorish, dick-eating, cumwad gargling, fake-ass, bimbo-brained, enlarged clit-having, abusive, monstrous, demonic, satanic, dark, shadow the hedgehog-loving, penis-breath-smelling, goblin-sniffing, dragon-humping, off-colored, fat, camel-toe-having, dirty, mentally homeless, child-abusing bitch. You suck. In a glorious twist of fate, it seems like her mom's phone starts ringing. The mother ends her pursuit once she has calmed down a bit. She seems to be talking to a man. Ugh, disgusting bitch. She still accuses Takai of lying to her. God, I just want to jump into the screen and kidnap her and deliver her straight to her loving husband's arms right away so that they can make hot and steamy. Uh, ramen noodles. Takai is starting to contemplate her situation a bit more. She's starting to regret getting involved with her old family. I want you all to imagine yourself in this very situation. How easy or difficult would it be for you to break away? Would you be able to resist going to see your old family? Do you believe in reincarnation? I personally don't, but I'd love to get you guys' perspective on this. So anyway, Takai is going through it right now. This is just too sad. <laughs> Patrick said! She wants to tell them that they can't meet again in order to protect them. But she just can't bring herself to break away from her family. <laughs> the dilemma is very true, though. Now that she's revealed herself to her loving family, she can't leave them again. They would end up going through that same pain again. God, this story is already extremely sad. It's so sad that I don't think I can make any more cunny jokes about it. Nah, I'm still going to make cunny jokes. Cunny love is cunny life. One day I hope for a cunny wife. As they make their way home, Takai reflects on the fun she had with them, but still wants to cut them off in order to avoid a potential dangerous situation for her evil mother and her real family. Well, pack it up, guys. It's time to say goodbye. Her family decides to throw a birthday party for her, to her old self before she was reincarnated. This actually made me tear up a bit IRL. Oh my god. I'm actually crying right now, guys. This is too beautiful. <laughs> At the end of the episode, they all have their fair share of tears to shed. Takai knows that there is no way she can let this go, and neither can Kisuke or his daughter. <laughs> Thank you.
前がなくから<笑>我慢することはないさ泣いてしまえばいい恥ずかしいことじゃないだろう The family has finally been reunited and have a lot more fun days ahead Oh man, I really cried there at the end. This story is just so... is just so sad. And beautiful. That ending gave everyone tears of joy. But what about you guys? Did you cry at the end as well? Well, suck it up, dudes. There's still plenty more episodes left. We are nowhere near the end. Save your tears for the next episode of Sumasho. Until next time, sayonara, guys.